so like even the irradiation of food with real ionizing radiation, the actual deadly kind, uh, does not seem to make the food unsafe to eat. Now I want to briefly touch on just some other avenues of, of microwave research that I think are rather fascinating, uh, and it helps us to realize that microwave technology is not just about cooking our food. Right. Uh, for instance, um, there's wireless power transmission, uh, specifically microwave power transmission, or MPT. Uh, this entails using mi a microwave emitter to send energy through the air to a receiver. Uh, one avenue here is to use it to power an aircraft. Uh, MPT was first used to power a miniature helicopter in 1964 for 10 hours. Uh, MIT grad and Raytheon electrical engineer uh, William C. Brown is the principal individual here. Uh, he continued to work on MPT throughout his, uh, the rest of his career, resulting in a number of experiments that demonstrated the potential. For instance, in the 1970s, he beamed 30 kilowatts of power at 84% efficiency for one mile or 1.6 kilometers. Uh, NASA has also explored the potential uh, use of MPT uh, as a sort of power beaming uh, system for space. Uh, and, and some see it as a means of transmitting power harvested by orbital solar arrays back down to Earth. Was there a uh, power plant of this kind in SimCity 2000 where a misdirected beam caused one of the disasters in city mode? Um, I, I, don't, I never played that game, so I don't know. I seem to recall that. So you got like a beam receiver. Right. Uh, and uh, my memory is if it gets misdirected and sets your city on fire. Huh. Sorry, not to be alarmist. <laughs> well, we're not, we're not quite there yet, so that's, that's a future concern. Another avenue of microwave use is uh, potentially communication. Uh, now, this is a topic we, we uh, did an entire episode of Stuff to Blow Your Mind on back in the day. Well, uh, so you're talking about in addition to just the normal telecommunications yes. that uses wireless frequency all, all the time. Oh, yeah, there's that. But then the, the spicier uh, selection here that we uh, did an episode on uh, is the microwave auditory effect. Uh, we did an episode titled V2K, the microwave auditory effect, and uh, basically the idea is that microwaves can actually induce sounds in the human brain, um, and, uh, and it can essentially be used to create something that is described as a whisper uh, by targeting the human brain. Now, I think part of what we talked about, though, also is that that true fact about the the perception of sounds induced by targeted microwaves at a, at a human head unfortunately it's been taken by a lot of people as evidence that say the government is actually putting voices in your head right. in which case i think generally what people are dealing with is some some form of uh, auditory hallucination right uh, but then they, yeah, they're explaining it away by being part of some sort of conspiracy and yeah. uh, uh and they're going down that rabbit hole um however um you know there is the potential to use microwave technology as a weapon uh, not by just breaking the front of the microwave oven, uh, opening and pointing the robot, but uh, as we discussed in that episode, uh, various experiments uh, concerning microwave-based weapons uh, targeting the brain have been, uh, have, have been carried out, not merely to induce sound, but to damage the brain of the target, uh, perhaps via the microwave pulse. Uh, some uh, commentators even argue that the mysterious attacks on the U.S. embassies in Cuba and China might have been induced by such technology, though so this does not seem to be the current scientific consensus with experts favoring sonic or even chemical sources. Oh, yeah. I've forgotten about those mysterious places for a while. Yeah. I'm going to get deep in that someday. Yeah, I think I can make for a really good episode of Stuff Yeah. So I think it's interesting to come back again to the military um, potential uses of microwave technology. Because when the radar is yeah. Yeah, that's where it began. But then suddenly, uh, this one particular investigator, this one particular uh, engineer, noticed that uh, this candy bar had melted in his pocket, and he decided to investigate further. And now that technology is in you know, pretty much every household in the United States. It's become just a, a, a ubiquitous uh, piece of household and kitchen technology. A friend of the dorm room going on. <laughs> yeah, yes, it has. Uh, many, many uh, uh, a bag of popcorn has been uh, cooked in wood. Many a hot pocket. Yeah, the hot pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little uh, the, the foil like uh, sleeve uh -huh. and uh, the extra clip. So, in my own house, like so much uh, uh, Trader Joe's Indian food that's been used out for the last time. I've got a specific request for you listeners out there. 
write in and let us know what is the worst microwave food product you've ever come across. The worst is the wrongness. Yeah. Here, look at what they There's some good ones out there. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, also just how to, how, what are some ingenious ways you can use the microwave? Have you have ever actually carried out one of these large scale um, gourmet from scratch style 1970s microwave recipes? Uh, I would love to hear from you, especially if you've cooked a Thanksgiving turkey in a microwave all the way. No other oven is involved. Uh, I have to hear that story and I have to know what uh, the result of the product is like. Oh, or lobster. <laughs> have you cooked a live lobster in the microwave? Don't do it just because uh, you heard about it in this episode. But if you've done it before, uh, I would like to hear it. In the meantime,